Hi, this is Jody Stoddard with insights from the perspective of a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This is part one of a four-part series about Daniel and Revelation. I've always been interested in the Second Coming since I was a kid and watched things unfold over my life, but I always knew that we had more time, that we weren't quite there yet. And then about five or six years ago, we seemed to move into an, a hastened period of time. And I started um, paying more attention, writing things down in my journal, and realized that a lot of things that were happening that we were missing. So in February of 2020, I shared what I had gathered so far in a small fireside with some friends. And my daughter-in-law asked me to record it, which I did. And then I made a podcast out of that, but the podcast and the PowerPoint were separate. And so I've decided to put them together into one program. And that's the purpose of this. As you watch it, please run everything through your power of discernment and through prayer. I do use lots of scriptures and words of the prophets. But again, this is my interpretation of those things, and you need to get your own interpretation. So I hope that you enjoy. Fair warning, this is a Bible study to Daniel and Revelation and the end times prophecies. So if discussing the end times events or future events or prophecies scares you, then you might not want to watch this. Although, um, to me, it's exciting and motivating, and it also gives me hope for the future because I know God is in charge and he knew what was coming and he told us what's coming. So knowing that and in that light, I've tried to present these things um, as basically signs from God so that we can know that the plan is unfolding and we're part of that and that we can have peace in that journey and faith in the plan. And the Lord has told us not to fear. Isaiah 41, 10, Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So as we face these future events, we can feel his love. As more and more events have been lining up, it's become like a big bag full of puzzle pieces and describing the picture that all these puzzle pieces make without the box top to show people what it, the picture looks like gets more and more difficult because there are so many pieces to this puzzle. Just like if I had you pull a puzzle piece out and it was a green one and you couldn't tell me from that piece if it was a tree or a leaf or or a green tractor until you had more pieces to go around it and then a picture would start to form. So that is my purpose today, is to take a whole lot of abstract puzzle pieces that when put together begin to form a picture. And so that is the focus of this PowerPoint presentation, is to get you to see how all these pieces begin to fit together. And particularly what I'm gonna focus on our temples, holy days, and signs in the sky, and how they all correlate. I really haven't gone much into the plagues or the wars, at least not yet anyway, but I've been amazed at how many prophecies are being fulfilled and were prophesied around temples and how important that is. So that's going to be the main focus of this as we go forward. Biblical numbers play a huge part in knowing how to interpret the signs and if they're meaningful or not as they unfold. So we're going to go through the biblical numbers that are most important quickly to give everybody an idea of what to be looking for when you're going through scriptures on the end times. The biblical number seven is found over 800 times just in the Bible. It is the number of completeness and perfection, both physical and spiritual. It derives much of its meaning from being tied directly to God's creation of all things. There were seven days in a week, and the seventh day is God's Sabbath. And it took him seven days to create the earth, or six, and then he rested on the seventh. We are in the seventh millennium of time. 
there are seven annual holy days and there are seven seals. Another number we're going to talk about is the number 12, realizing that we have two sets of 12 hours in each day and that when God created the universe and set it in motion, he did so like a giant clock. The number 12 is found 180 places in the Bible. It is the symbol of faith, the church, and divine rule. There were 12 sons of Jacob, which formed the 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus had 12 disciples or apostles, and we have 12 today. Revelation says that the kingdom of God has 12 gates guarded by 12 angels. 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes are mentioned, and that is the 144,000. And the ancient high priest had a breastplate that had 12 stones representing the 12 tribes. So those are just a few of the number 12 shown in the Bible. 40 is a huge number in the Bible. So let's talk about the number 40. One of the biggest things we want to pay attention to about the number 40 is that it generally symbolizes a period of testing, trial, or probation. One of the amounts of time considered to be a generation is 40, as well as 70 and 100. The gestation period of a human child is approximately 40, 42 weeks. It took 40 years to build the Salt Lake Temple. It rained on Noah for 40 days. Goliath taunted David for 40 days before he was defeated. Saul, David, and Solomon reigned for 40 years each. Moses, Elijah, and Jesus fasted in the desert for 40 days, and Jonah warned Nineveh of impending destruction for 40 days. Moses lived 40 years in the desert before God told him to go to Egypt, and then he lived in Egypt for another 40 years. He was on Mount Sinai on two different occasions for 40 days each, and the children of Israel wandered in the desert for 40 years and he sent spies to investigate the promised land for 40 days. So those are just some of the references to the number 40 in scripture. And we want to talk about the number 70 in reference to scripture. 70 has a sacred meaning in the Bible that is made up of the factors of two perfect numbers, seven representing perfection and 10 representing completeness and God's law. As such, it symbolizes perfect spiritual order carried out with all power. And it can also represent a period of judgment. 70 elders were appointed by Moses and we have 70s in our church. Ancient Israel spent a total number of 70 years in captivity in Babylon. Jerusalem kept 70 years of Sabbaths while Judah was in Babylonian captivity. 77s is 490 years, and they were determined for Jerusalem to complete its transgressions and make an end for sin and for everlasting righteousness to enter into it. And that's from Daniel. What are signs? And I hope this one gives you a chuckle. But signs are warnings. They also let us know where we are and how much further we have to go. So if you're driving down the road and you see a sign that says Los Angeles, it doesn't mean you're there yet. Next to it, you'll see a sign that tells you how many miles left you have to go. So signs tell us that we are on the right road and that we're heading in the right direction and that events are in the future are coming up. Also, we wanna make sure we keep the idea of signs separate from the actual events. For instance, after the total eclipse in 2017, I heard several people say, well, I don't get it, nothing happened. It wasn't a big deal. Because the eclipse was a sign that something was going to begin or something had been set in motion. It wasn't the event itself. So as you see signs unfold, they are pointing the way, just like a road sign, a road sign would point the way or give you a warning of what was ahead. Also realize that there are multiple prophecies of Christ returning in various times and places prior to his official second coming. So we need to keep that in mind as we study. It isn't just one event. There are at least several events that we are aware of and likely more that will take place over a several year period of time. So when it talks about Christ coming in his glory 
that's the time he'll be burning the earth and sanctifying and cleansing it. That's not the time when you want to be finding out for the first time that he's back. By then you should know he is already working on the earth. Sister Wendy Nelson in a CES devotional in Hawaii in January 2016 gave a talk called Becoming the Person You Were Born to Be. And I watched it live when she was doing it and um, it was really amazing. Nine, Mark number 943, nine minutes and 43 seconds on her talk, she says this, what if you learned that the Savior had already returned to this earth, that he as part of his second coming had already met with some of his true followers in several mar marvelous large gatherings, gatherings about which the world, including CNN and the blogosphere, knew nothing. If you found out that the Savior was already on the earth, what would you be des what would you desperately want to do today and what would you be willing and ready to do tomorrow? When I heard her say that, I thought, wow, I wish I could just, you know, be her friend and call her up and ask her what she knew, because obviously there's some really big clues in there. And I also wanted to point out a few more number things. I know you probably thought we were done with the numbers, but seven years, we talked about um, the number seven being really important. And another way that that plays in is with time times and a half, which is three and a half years and 1260 days and 1290 days. And each of those is about three and a half years. And both Daniel and John in Revelation and in other prophets as well speak of two distinct periods of time, which each equal about three and a half years. And these two sets of time appear to be back to back. Time times and a half is often calculated as three and a half years, but we'll also discover some other ways that that formula can play out. The time of trouble is three and a half years, and that precedes the day of Jehovah. And this is the time when things begin to unfold. The earth begins to show the early signs of labor. And then the day of Jehovah is the second three and a half year period of time when God's judgments come upon the world in full and little of mankind remains. So that second three and a half years is when the great tribulations take place. Understanding that going forward will be really helpful. Also, some people refer to the tribulations as only three and a half years because they're only talking about the day of Jehovah. I kind of put a whole seven year umbrella over it. So when I talk about the tribulations, um, I include the, the time of troubles with the day of Jehovah for a total of seven years. The reason I do that is because it's also often referred to as a woman that travaileth and pains to be delivered. And so you have this woman in labor and most of the time a woman doesn't know for sure that she's in labor until she's about halfway through. And it's about that point in time when the pains begin to increase in frequency and strength and then she knows it's time to go to the hospital. And so that's why I include both halves of that in the seven years of tribulation because most women don't start out in hard labor. It starts out slow, you're not even sure that it's started yet, and then by the time you're about halfway through, you're, you know that you're in labor. And that's how it will be with the time of trouble versus the day of Jehovah and that second three and a half years. So now we're gonna look at prophecies that happen with temples and holy days. And a lot of times, events that are happening around surrounding temples that were prophesied in the scriptures are also happening on holy days. And that's one way we can know that that is the sign we were looking for. The first temple we had at the beginning of our rest, the restoration was the Kirtland Temple. It happened at Passover on April 2nd, 1836. And it fulfilled the scripture, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And if you study the visions that opened up when this temple was dedicated and the week this following Sunday after the dedication, um, many of the ancient prophets uh, appeared there in the temple and many of the people there saw them or heard them. So if you haven't studied up on that, that's a really great place to start. 
This is a great visual timeline of the 2300 days or 2300 years. And as we go through, you'll note that days, years, weeks, and months can be interchangeable for different prophecies. I think of it as an algebraic formula. And if you plug in certain days and times and they match up with events or signs, then you know that that's the ones we're looking for. So we're going to look at Daniel 8, 11, 14 and read those if you want to read along. Verse 11, Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice, or temple worship, was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary, the temple, was cast down. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. So this was Daniel's vision of the destruction of the second temple, which happened in 70 AD. There again, that, there's that year 70. Verse 13, Then I heard one saint speaking to another saint, unto that certain saint which spake. How long shall the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? In other words, how long until we'll have a daily sacrifice or have a temple again? And he said unto me, 2,300 days, or in this case years, and then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So here you can see that, um, well, let me go back. Let's, let me finish something else first. Miller was the founder of the Millerites and the Seventh-day Adventists. And he became convinced that the 2300 day year period started in 457 with Artaxerxes decree to rebuild Jerusalem. Miller believed that the second coming would be 2300 years after that event, but it wasn't. The calculation takes us to 1843 to 46 AD, taking into consideration that our calendar is off about three years. The Nauvoo temple was the first temple where all of these ordinances were restored. So was Daniel's prophecy fulfilled? On April 30th, 1846, we had the dedication of the Nauvoo Temple and we had the daily sacrifice or temple work restored with all of the ordinances. And then we jump forward to Daniel 12 verses five through seven, if you wanna read along. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood two other, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on the other side of the bank of the river. And one said unto the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth for ever and ever, it shall be for time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things will be finished. So I want you to think about that for a minute in conjunction with the dedication of the Nauvoo Temple. Knowing that the original Nauvoo Temple was the fulfillment of Daniel 8.13, what picture might Daniel have seen? Which river? Who were the two men, one on each side? Who was on the water when the question was asked, how much longer until the end, and until the power of the holy people be scattered? As I read that, I could see Joseph standing on the Nauvoo side of the river. He had been martyred two years before but him staying there watching over the Nauvoo temple until it was decommissioned by fire. And Brigham on the other side of the river, on the west side, getting ready to lead the saints to Utah. And the answer was given time, times and a half until the end of these wonders. So biblical formulas are used over and over again for different events. In this case, rather than use three and a half years, let's try plugging in a jubilee. A jubilee is seven Shemitahs. A Shemitah is seven years. So a jubilee is 49 years. And on the 4950th year, 
there's a celebration. And also I'll show you later a chart that shows how Jubilees have marked many of the great events that have happened since the creation. So if we use a Jubilee to fill in the formula, what do we get? Time equals 49 years, times would be twice that, so 98, and then half a time is 24 and a half years for a total of 171 and a half years. So if you add 171 and a half years to 1846 when the Nauvoo Temple was dedicated and the saints began heading west, you end up in the fall of 2017. And the Revelation 12 sign of the woman of the sky happens then, as well as the first of two rare total eclipses across the United States, which are seven years apart. But before we get into that, we need to get out of the sixth seal and into the seventh. And in order to understand that, we need to talk about the seals. So we're going to do that in part number two. I'll see you there.